In the Jewish religion, we celebrate the holiday of Passover. Passover recognizes a story from the book of Exodus, giving thanks for being freed from oppression and delivered to the promised land. As part of the celebration, we sing a song entitled Dainu, acknowledging and giving thanks for each of the links in the chain of events that led to our freedom. Basically, Dainu means it would have been enough or it would have been sufficient. So, for example, when referring to the crossing of the Red Sea, we say, if, we had, if he had split the sea for us and not taken us through unto dry land, Dainu. If he had taken us through unto dry land and not drowned our oppressors, Dainu. If he had drowned our oppressors and not supplied our needs for 40 years in the desert, Dainu. That would be sufficient. Dainu always reminded me of Jan Murray on the old Price is Right TV show. When contestants got to a certain point, they had the option of saying, that's enough, I'll stop here, Jan, Dainu. I was 50 years old in 1993 when Charlie started having epilepsy. I enjoyed a very good life and successful career, but sadly I'm one of those people who tries to make sense of things in a world where little makes sense. And I tried to make sense of my good fortune. It didn't keep me up at night, but there was sort of confusion about why I'd been so lucky. When Charlie's seizures began, it added a whole additional layer of confusion. In addition to all the other feelings the company having a very sick kid, what is utterly beyond comprehension is how this could happen to a baby, let alone millions of them. What possible meaning could that have? Then a series of events happened. I read John Freeman's 1990 book, Seizures and Epilepsy in Childhood, that introduced me to the ketogenic diet. I read his 1992 study documenting how 29% of 58 consecutive kids as sick as Charlie had become seizure-free with the ketogenic diet. I called John. Nancy and I took Charlie to Hopkins, started the diet with John and Mrs. Kelly and Diana Pillis, and Charlie's multiple daily seizures went away. Nothing short of a miracle. But the story didn't end there. When I asked John why none of his colleagues to whom Nancy and I had taken Charlie had mentioned diet therapy, he told me the ketogenic diet will never resume its priority as an early treatment option if information about it is communicated through traditional avenues of Western medicine. In essence, he was telling me that in order to achieve public awareness, this information needed to circumvent the medical establishment and go directly to the epilepsy population. Then, informed patients and caregivers could broach the subject with their doctors. It's not as though Bob went on over my head immediately. Though I never asked him, I'm sure he knew he was talking to a guy who had now learned the value of informed joint decision-making and a guy who knew how to turn on a camera and tell a story. What he didn't know was that he was talking to someone who was trying to make sense of the senseless and been searching for a meaning to his life. There was never a moment when John and I sat down and said, hey, let's collaborate on this thing. But in the following years, as he continued to push for scientific understanding and hospital reimbursement for dietary support, he was a tremendous mentor and cheerleader for the work of the Charlie Foundation. I was the benefactor of his wisdom, navigating within a world with which I could not have been less familiar. I think as much as anything he counseled patients, his progress seems so slow with his therapy that seems so obvious. Though there's much more to be done, and words such as underutilized and last resort continue be, to be associated with the ketogenic diet, progress has been significant. Certainly, all in the Hopkins group affiliated with diet therapy remain on the leading edge. So getting back to the Dainu thing, as time passes and I'm able to reflect on how John helped me and my family and the immeasurable gratitude we feel, I think about Dainu. I think to myself, if John had written seizures and epilepsy in childhood and not published the 1992 Hopkins study, Dainu. 
if he had published the 1992 study but not offered the keto programs at Hopkins, Dianum. If he had offered the diet at Hopkins but never suggested, I try to get this information directly to the public, Dainu. I think about John and the Hopkins team every time I hear our now 18-year seizure and drug-free Charlie play piano or watch him box or work with preschoolers in his career in early childhood education or when he just teases me about getting old. I certainly think of John every time I hear from another family like ours who got their child back. Of course, I'm still flummoxed by life, but on my bookshelf, I have a copy of Caesars and Epilepsy in Childhood, written by John Freeman, that John signed. It's undated. It says, to Jim and Nancy and Charlie, I hope you have helped to create an environment where physicians listen to parents and where dialogue between them results in a better quality of life. To which I would only add, Dianu.